I've played tons of Super Nintendo games, and one thing that I've noticed is that with a new generation of gaming, we were introduced to a new generation of wonderful sounds thanks to the SSMP chip. And that's the topic of today's video, the top 10 Super Nintendo soundtracks. Between the sounds of horns, an incredible echo and reverb, and unique sounds that composers use to their advantage, some of the most memorable songs from my childhood, and maybe even yours, were on the Super Nintendo. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, it's a huge pet peeve of mine when people talk over the music, so I'll talk briefly about the game, and then I'll shut up, because you're here for the music, not for me. That being said, let's begin. A legacy franchise from Hudson, Adventure Island first graced our lives in 1988 as a port of the arcade title Wonder Boy courtesy of Sega. But once the first game was created, Adventure Island was made into a fully-fledged franchise. As time went on, it hopped to the Super Nintendo with Super Adventure Island. Now what's interesting is that the music you're about to hear was composed by someone you might recognize, Yuzo Koshiro, the composer of Act Razor, as well as Streets of Rage 1-3. through the soundtrack has a unique jam to it, and it's paired with a fairly decent game as well. I actually enjoyed Super Adventure Island. Have you ever played Rocket Knight Adventure on the Genesis? Sparkster is the sequel, but it's the SNES version of the sequel. The Genesis did have its own slightly different version. The composers on this game were Masahiro Ikariko, Minako Matsuhira, Michiru Yamane, and Akira Yamaoka. While the game itself wasn't that impressive as a sequel, the soundtrack was wonderful and in my opinion showcases the more generic baseline sound that many composers tended to use in their games. But as the norm with Konami, they added that little Konami flair that we've grown and known throughout the years. Here's some of the songs that I felt stood out.
Axley is an incredible game, and I'm sad that I haven't had the opportunity to play it. I've only ever seen my friends play it, but the one thing I can say is that the soundtrack from Tato Kudo is decent. I can't wait to check this out at some point. Ever seen the movie Waterworld with Kevin Costner? Well, they made a video game out of it, and it's not really that great. In fact, the soundtrack is the only reason why it stands out. Almost every version of this game is rough, from the Virtual Boy to the Game Boy to MS-DOS. They all tended to be hot garbage. But Dean Evans, he did God's work on the SNES version, with one of the more relaxing and impressive soundtracks on the system. It's worth at least listening to the soundtrack, but you can definitely avoid the game. Honorable mention is Super Turrican 2. Much like Waterworld, Super Turrican 2 features some tracks that share the same amount of environmental ambiance that works thanks to the efforts of Chris Hulsbeck. To me, Star Fox did something that stands out more than any other game, except for one that's higher on this list. Hajime Hirasawa focused on more than just music. His works feature incredibly organic sounds that truly empower the music that he's creating. I personally might not enjoy Star Fox, but I cannot deny that this game has some incredibly memorable and awesome tunes. <laughs>
Well, I did say later in the list, but I really meant the next game. <laughs> Super Metroid was a massive facelift to the Metroid we knew and loved from the NES era of gaming. Much like Star Fox, the composers decided to implement tremendously organic sounds that in many ways set a very tense and unnerving tone to the events that we were seeing unfold in front of us. When I think of Secret of Mana, I think of one song, Into the Thick of It, which for many of us is likely the song that comes to mind the minute you mention Secret of Mana. The rest of the songs, unfortunately, they're hit or miss, and they don't really have as much of an impact as I would like. That being said, Hiroki Kikuda did a great job and did create some standout tracks that convey the overall emotion of the scenes that they were utilized in. Oh, you thought you were safe from him, huh? You thought that I wouldn't mention the God King, the master of musical motivation, the oral aura of amazing applications, the symphonic celestial superhero, Tim Fallen? Well, fortunately for you, this is one of his final compositional works before leaving software creations, and ultimately in 2005, leaving the industry for freelance work. Plock itself is a silly game, but many people hold it in high regards as a platformer on the SNES. I've never played it, so I can't support that idea, but I do know that anything Tim Fallon touches is pure gold, and if you want a badass soundtrack, look no further than Tim Fallon's contribution on Plock. I will say it is much more mellow than what we observed during his NES years, which I do find to be interesting. <laughs>
If you want bang for your buck, Kirby Superstar is the way to go. It's an anthology that features eight games. One in particular, Spring Breeze, is a remake of Kirby's Dreamland with quality of life improvements. Jun Ishikawa was the composer, and for as long as Kirby has been an IP, Ishikawa has been making Kirby music. If Mario has Koji Kondo, Kirby has Jun Ishikawa. There are some standout tracks from this game, and here they are. This was an incredibly difficult tiebreak. Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 are on par with each other, mostly because David Wise is a melodic genius. But when push came to shove, I found that Donkey Kong 2 had better examples of David Wise's work. That being said, Aquatic Ambience still to this day carries its weight as being one of the most emotionally beautiful songs I've encountered on the system, and I don't think any other song will take its spot. Here's some of David Wise's standout tracks from Donkey Kong Country 2.
Chrono Trigger is interesting not only because it's one of the greatest games of all time, but because of the composer Yasunori Mitsuda. For a long time, Mitsuda worked as a sound effects engineer, and one day, he walked up to Hironobu Sakaguchi and said he would quit if he wasn't allowed to make music for video games. His first music assignment? Chrono Trigger. And who else to help him out? The Nobuo Uematsu. Mitsuda has an interesting compositional style, and that same sound did wonders for Chrono Cross, where he absolutely nailed it. Mitsuda's sounds, mixed with the convoluted plot of the Chrono series, complements each other and makes for a sublime soundtrack. To me, Final Fantasy III is the best game on the system, hands down, bar none. It was a masterpiece, and every person who stepped up to the plate to accept responsibility for it delivered in a volume that no other person of the era was capable of doing. In particular, Nobuo Uematsu stood above the rest. I mentioned in the previous episode about the top 10 NES soundtracks, which I'll go ahead and link below that Final Fantasy was composed in such a way that every definable moment has a song that was associated with it. From stores to walking outside to entering a dungeon, they were all so different. Final Fantasy III, to me, is Uematsu's magnum opus. He composed an opera, an opera in game. He composed a symphonic suite with Dancing Mad. He single-handedly created one of the most memorable songs on the system, and it is with my great honor that I provide to you some of the best tracks from one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy III. Thank you. 
And those are my top 10 soundtracks on the Super Nintendo. Did you agree with my list? Feel free to comment down below what you feel are the top 10 soundtracks on the Super Nintendo. I do respond to all comments, even the mean ones. If you haven't already, please do consider hitting that subscribe button as it helps me grow on this wonderful platform of 12 year olds playing Roblox. And that like button, if you push it, it goes further and further up YouTube's algorithm's ass. And because YouTube is kinky like that, it helps push visibility for the channel. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, fortify her out.